Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now we're looking at the Commonwealth of England. Just England, no whales yet, but eventually. Unfortunately though, I think my game, as many people did say, my game is bugged because Harold Wilson no longer exists in this timeline. But if you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. It seems to me he's like leading a shadow government because, I don't know, he's not here anymore, but our noble cause. Our cause has always been made clear, yet some members of the government have appeared to have let their memories slip, and so they must again be reminded of what they stand for. The Socialist Labour Party aims to bring the workers' revolution to Britain, to keep the red flag flying high to ensure safety for all, against all threats from our home or abroad. Our party does not exist to serve the narrow-minded interests of the inflexible hardliners. It exists to serve the people of England, followed up with our plot. Little is left to be done before we can shut Betcher's influence within the Social Slaver Party down for good. We must set the date, set the place, and set the stage for the action that will mark the inevitable end of Reginald Butch and his unstable band of extreme commies. Wilson has already made ex massive efforts towards perfecting the plan to remove Birch from the party and he is satisfied that he will be ready. We know, or he knows, that when the time comes, Birch's time in the party shall end, end, end for good. Oh, I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing quite okay myself, but we must continue on. Actually, do anything here. Oh, uh, no. Minus 2.1 billion? That is very nice. Our plot and then our real enemy. As Birch has continued to prove himself to be more of a threat than an asset to the party. Therefore, we must continue on endeavors to find ways through which we can keep the party united. The plan has been drawn up to fulfill this is... To fulfill this is constant and consistent reinforcement of the Socialist Labour Party's belief that the real threat to socialism and England itself are the capitalists within the National Democratic League. There is no doubt that they would jump at any opportunity to tear down all that we will build to protect the workers of England. We lose conservative democracy, get more libertarian social support, and in these areas the NDL support will go down, we get more Socialist Labour Party's progress, uh, support basically. We'll go up. Ooh, a little bit of lag. And also, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit slow here. But it's fine. Whatever. We do have some comments to go through, such as what? Ooh, look at, look at this. Very loyal. That's awesome. 95% over here. 97.5%. That is so good. We have a ton of reformation for the party. Look at that. So much reformist influence. But still nothing here for social policy. Why do you pain me so? Why? Actually, I, man, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't know what nations are going to get reworked in the future. I'm not going to say that Harold Wilson needs rework. I will say, though, that his portrait... I wish for the love of God that his portrait would show up. But, I don't know. Just... I want to improve society more. And it's, it's getting better, don't get me wrong. But we have a rudimentary factoring lines. I don't know. It's, we have an in, experienced industrial base. We're non-nuclear power. Of course, we already have modern research facilities, but... I don't know, I just like making things better, but... Our real enemy, drafting the plan. You know, Harold, the best opportunity for a finishing blow would come at a yearly SLP meeting. The entire party will be there, all of them who matter anyways. <clears throat> you could easily knock Birch out of his position with a snap out. You have mobilized a moderate wing of the party quite well, yes? You see, Birch will deliver a speech to the delegates and after that. I can follow it with my own speech, yes, I know. Thank you, Anthony. Wilson interrupted, barely hiding his irritation. I'm just saying, Harold, if you denounce Birch right then and there, he won't have the political weight to repel your accusations. Probably, Ben said, nervously twirling a pen. Probably. Care to explain your doubt? Well, he's not alone, as you know. He's got quite the backing, one that quite possibly larger than ours. If we want to kick in his sorry arse out, then we'll need a good speech. An argument's not easily refuted. Then again, I won't say it'll be very hard to denounce a Bolshevik in a democratic socialist party, but... We won't find out unless we try. Let's go do it then. Very good. Followed up. Oh, actually, hold on. Before we follow it up, actually, no. We can spend a PP. Um, let's do. Let's do loyalty. I like lo having loyal people. A hundred percent. Nice. And we're gonna keep doing the twenty-five one here for slightly more reform, hopefully. But all odds are against him. Despite the emerging success of our enduring efforts, we cannot expect to hold together the two factions of our party forever. Although it may not be soon, Birch could one day try and take over the party in an attempt to impose his ridiculous and unpopular principle on the country. We ought to remind him that everything is stacked against him. We shall learn to fear us as he should. We already have plans to strike at him the moment the right time comes. There is not a single chance of him passing us. So one of the comments I tried to get to earlier, um, uh, someone did ask why does, Port why does Harold Wilson not have a portrait yet? That is because the game has a little bug in it apparently. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to see Harold Wilson. You see him on the thumbnail. I found his portrait in the thumbnail. I'm sure other people have played as him too. But, I don't know. Just for some reason, he just... he just He's, he's sick. He's got to be sick or something. He doesn't want to show up to work. So, um, Someone also asked, will I do a Jellicoe campaign? Oh, you bet your butt I will do a Jellicoe campaign. Uh, I'll, I'll probably end up doing all the English paths. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, my goal is like to get through at least one, get through every campaign at least once. So that is the goal right now. And actually, I'm going to do this stuff later on, especially once we have more elections coming along. So cool. Final preparations. We are so close to success, but we have little to leave as little as we can to chance. We have to do that. This moment ought to be more similar to a choreographed piece of theater than a political stunt. Every alas minute detail will have to be checked. Every syllable spoken in the aftermath will have to be carefully constructed, and every conceivable preparation must be made. We cannot guarantee that this task will be effortless, but we must do all we can to stop it from being a disaster. Absolutely. Um, actually, since we're here, 25? Ah, it's almost perfect, my friends. Almost perfect. And actually... Um, Red D Dragon, Red Star. Walsh Independence is a venerable cause, but anyone can see that their experiment has largely failed. Saunders Lewis essentially turned the nation into his own personal dictatorship, and his criminal cover-up of the coal crisis demolished their economy. If we aim to build socialism on the British Isles, we can stop where Bristol ends. The wealth generated by the coal miners of Wales will be invaluable to the well-being of the British, all British workers, as well as of the critical western ports and the brave longshoremen who staff them. We aim to build a political national union where the traditions of Britain's various groups are respected, hopefully, our promises of cultural and political autonomy as much as it can be allowed for socialism to flourish anyways. Will we make the government and Cardiff understand that we don't seek to replicate their crimes of past English governments? On the other hand, if reactionary elements sabotage our efforts to unify the British working class, the full force of the British or full force of the people will face them. United fight. I'm just hoping that does not cancel okay, it does not cancel that yet. Oh my god, I was wrong. Oh, that sucks. Big booties. The capitalists of the West. We have freed the proletariat from the chains in England, but now that we've liberated the masses of one nation, who's to say we cannot repeat this in all the territories of the fallen UK? For its part, Wales has never exactly been an opportunity to flourish under socialism. And now that we lack distraction, it is time for the Commonwealth to turn its attention to the matter of reunification. We will need to be cautious not to offend those who remember the capitalist practice of cultural imperialism, yet it might be possible to reach an agreement. Oh, we don't even get any... Oh my god, we don't even get any progress stories here. Sitting down with them versus... Uh, this stuff. Uh, I want to sit down with them. But we, we'll figure it out. Actually, we basically have to wait. Um, uh, if you want to read this, I, I'm pretty sure I've already read this stuff before, so if you want to read through these, please go right ahead. On Terror and Black Shirts, of course, as well as The Workers of Free Wales. Oh my goodness. Why? I mean, I still might read these, but like, at least I want to get through this one. Yeah, I've already read this before. Like, I'm pretty sure I have. I'm, I could be wrong. No, maybe not. Maybe I haven't, though. Hmm. I'll still probably read this, though. Yeah, I, I haven't read these two. Yeah, maybe I haven't read these at all. I'll still read them, then. Whatever. We just gotta get through this one first. I know it's a little laggy, it's a little slow, just because of the time I was recording, I'm actually processing the video in the background, just because I ran out of time for the other stuff. But actually, our factory's looking really good. They're looking really good. The Welsh issue. Harold Wilson has deemed England to be able to expand, and Wales will soon become its likely target. The nation's been a mess from the start, and will likely have no other option than to join us after all. They are fully aware of the measures we'll be taking or will, will be willing to use. If they're dared to defy us, they would have to be led by some sort of madman to decline. The time for uh, unification talks with the Welsh are upon us, so the letter will be sent to Cardiff immediately to get the process started. What choice do they have? And since Goring's not going to attack us, probably, since Borman won. The drums of war. Wales has refused to even host talks with English over with the English over the topic of unification. Clearly, more aggressive measures will have to be utilized in order to bring about unification with Wales. Measures from which the English have made clear that they would not shy away from. Ko and his darn clique of national terrorizers uh, will be put down. They will not stand a chance against the might of the English military. The English army will require some time to prepare, but given time, Ko's men will be all retreating from the cause they claim they would die for. If those in England are all in one mind over how this will end. Wales will fall. Why mob Darogan's pride? The tyrannical chains of bourgeois despotic tyranny hangs over Wales, a land which should be for the workers to be turned into the playhouse of some insane pseudo-fascist demagogues and their corrupt flunkies. There is a time for peace, but when the workers of Wales cry for help just from across the border, is it not right and just that the Social Labour Party should not come to their aid? Or should come to their aid. Is it not our duty to protect all those victims of oppression? We march to war, may the people forgive us for it. Calling up the reserves. War has become unavoidable. The Free Wales Army will no doubt be prepared to defend their homeland with a degree of ferocity few would have expected from the Welsh. If the English are to avoid all out humiliation at the hands of the FWA, more men will have to be called up to do their duty. The nation's reserves will help bring the fight to the Welsh. The generals of the English armed forces are keen to avoid even the slightest hu chance of humiliation at the hands of the Welsh. England's army may dwarf its Welsh counterpart, but this action is seen as necessary. To bolster its ranks of soldiers and overwhelm the defenders of Wales, nothing to be left to chance. More must serve. 
Can we at least do the focus? Please let us do a focus. Come on, ready RAF? One of England's greatest advantages over the Freewell's army is the fact that it is an air force at its disposal. Limited as the Royal Air Force may be, it is still the significant use coming to the time of the invasion. Therefore, more warplanes will be stationed in the airfields closest to Wales, and they will be prepared to take to the skies and rain heck upon the Welsh. They may be one of the first times many of our pilots will see active combat, and these men will especially need extra training before the time of the invasion. The roar of English engines would soon be heard all over Wales, and one could only imagine that it would shake the Welsh people to the cores. Take to the skies, my friends. Yeah, I don't like that we just have to stop everything we're doing and take invade Wales. Like, I get it, it's important, but still. But I'll gladly take this stuff. Uh, we have no planes. Well, that sucks. That just sucks. Not sure what to say, but it just sucks. Testing the Welsh. Given the Welsh's enduring stubbornness to accept English hegemony, a plan has been drawn up to start a small scale attack on the Welsh border. This fight will draw the soldiers of the Free Wales Army and enable the English to realize how capable they really are. The English victory is, of course, the expected outcome. Yet, in the unlikely event of an FWA victory, the English army will be greatly dismayed, and the government will also be embarrassed. Gunfire will be exchanged and soldiers will fall, but whatever the outcome, the war will follow and will be much more bloody than a simple skirmish to launch the attack. Are we seriously not going to be able to win here? Come on, guys. If it's just a bunch of Welsh led by George Taylor. Uh, I don't want to do this, but we're going to do it anyways because we can. Oh, there we go. Now they're definitely going to win. Oh, maybe not. Oh, we'll see. Maybe not. Our guys, why do you suck so hard? What are you? 20 combat with with artillery. My goodness. Our guys are just killing themselves on here. We should be able to win. Republic of Brittany wants to join the OFM. The Bretons are asking to join our alliance. Brittany holds major strategic importance as they are located in mainland Europe and can easily give safe harbor to naval units operating in the Atlantic. The largest threat to their existence is the Burgundian state, which is surely the reason they are looking for protection. Opposition? Vote for the membership, why not? A victory at the border. Reports have been sent back from the Welsh border about the results of the border conflict. They conclude that little remains of the men that Free Wales Army had stationed in the area. The attack has been a success, and the Welsh military has been significantly weakened as a result. You're not Lewis person. Uh, the rest of Wales is now an open, wide open to an attack. England has confirmed that its forces are vastly superior and will likely begin its invasion of the whole of Wales shortly. The soldiers are ready, and soon they will march on to Wales. Nothing can stop them, but Wales will fall. Yeah, you're not Lewis person. But okay. Oh, I'm going to probably need a spot of fuel here. From refineries. Oh, wait. Are these, these refineries are costing us so much. What the heck? Wait, why do they cost refineries minus 864? That doesn't make any sense. Come on, please, just let's go to war. We have so many more focuses to do. I don't understand why it has to be like this. War is declared. Since the outcome of the border conflict was announced, on both sides of the border, troops and civilians alike have been awaiting the start of the inevitable English invasion. The Free Wales Army has had some time to prepare, but no doubt struggled to hold off the advancing English, all the while harried by enemy aerial superiority. However, the excruciating wait will soon be over. The order to attack will be ordered from the English High Command, and the English army will march into Wales. Few will regret their passing the FWA's grip over Wales. The dream of the Welsh Republic is long since dead, and what is left will be soon put out of its misery. Death to the FWPA. There you go. Hey, we wanted peace. Okay, so can we do this one too? Alright, let's do that one. Alright, and then we'll have to welcome them home, unfortunately. Wales is at last once again part of the Commonwealth, this time not as a subject like the Imperialists and Capitals would no doubt desire, but instead as an equal partner in the new union we are creating. This should be remembered for what it is, a liberation of men from the base problems of nationalism and chauvinism, in the realms of united pan-national class struggle, one which the Socialist Labour Party shall take in the lead. The effects of unification. Um, I haven't read this one before, so we're going to read this one. Go ahead. Welsh terrorism? I don't want to do that. No thanks. On terrorism black shirts. Unfortunately, not all can see the wisdom and benefits of reunification. Some resistance was expected from the moment unification was a fact. Well, at least we know their identities and ideology. Fascism is a cancer in the world, and it's no surprise that it pop up the skin of Welsh nationalism as a wolf would hide amidst a flock of sheep. These black shirts fight from the hills, and we will need to deal with them if Wales is to ever know a proper peace. Absolutely. 
Cool. And let's get ready for Scotland. Because Scotland will happen within a few decades, at least. I know. A few decades will die. But, like... Hope we can do well here. Because that's the only thing it did. This. It didn't go so well for us, but whatever. And... The workers of uh, Wales Free. In these troubling times, it can be difficult to see what good we do for the people of Britain, but seeing the streets of Cardiff lined with those supporting reunification was a sight which made the whole business worth undertaking. The workers of Wales, the coal miners and fishermen and farmers alike, all turned out for the parades. They know as well as anyone else that we bring hope for the struggles, the proletariat of Wales uniting in common cause with that of England. Oh, it was a beautiful sight to see. Whether they liked it or not, it was beautiful. We lose political power though, which sucks. Oh, get some gun stuff, why not? Just a little bit ahead of time. Um, there we go, special forces because we can. Why not? Hopefully we can go back if the odds are against them. I hate that. Hate, 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 hate that so much. That you have to focus on that and something else. Because you can't just... I know, like, it's a whole focus tree thing, but, like, you can't only focus on one thing at a time. These tanks looking really bad. Yeah, we're actually missing a lot of equipment still. Um, infantry equipment's looking okay, though. I'm not going to lower what we have there, because you can't lower less than one, but... And cutting it stuff down probably isn't a great idea, but still. Yeah, we'll cut down military spending a little bit more. We're still putting up some civvies, too. Can we build any... Oh, yes! Southern Wales, yes! Is that a core of ours or not? It is not. That's interesting. There we go. The workers have been freed, finally. The odds are against them. Thank God we can go back and do that. Alright, so they get some more stuff here, which is not great. Do we have an intelligence agency? No, we don't. Well, I want to get... Eh, we could do it. We only have three... Up to almost five lines. Not quite there. We'll get to five probably by the end of this. Um, and uh, there you go. Cool. Absolute reformation of the party is... Finito. Benito. Very good. Now, did I read another one over here too? I might have. I can't remember, honestly. Got a lot of map out there, which is really nice. Final preparations. Yeah, I've already read this one too. Final preparations, not bad. Return home programs, all right. And if you want to read that again, please go right ahead. Because after this side, we will address the comment... Um, about which way we're going with female pensions versus the Equality Act. We'll go through that when we get there in a little bit. And I do want to do the new Socialist Armed Forces. <clears throat> it isn't super, super important, but it'll be good to do. We have stuff about the church. And I do want to do a last speech as well when we get there. So uh, we'll see what happens. But this is just a little disturbing for me to see. I don't want to cut stuff down anymore, but we might still have to. All right, so at this point, stop costing us so much. There you go. Now, money-wise, we should be doing better, right? Yes. Good. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Why do we... Why did refiners cost so much? Daily gain is minus 30. From 18 fuel. The odds are against them. Very good. Alright, so we got that one done. Let's do final preparations. And... Actually, can we do... No, we can't do that one yet. That sucks. It's alright, though. Alright. And strike. We are ready. The stage has been set and the curtains are drawn. Harold Wilson will soon stand center stage under the spotlight where he will order the execution of the plan. It will hopefully lead to the death of Reg Birch's influence in the party and the beginning of a new age for the Socialist Labour Party. The time to strike is upon us. If everything has been done correctly, we can finish Birch, but if we make one wrong move, all that we have worked for could collapse. Down with the trade event next. Very good. Very, very good. Hopefully nothing bad will happen, so... Also, there was another comment saying that we should not go for state atheism. Where are we at? Oh, well, are support weapons. That's pretty nice, actually. Um, planes? We're looking pretty good on planes. 67, of course. Anything there? No. i right, do some naval stuff, because we can. Dude, what do we have here? Social laws, economic laws, political laws. Okay, so we're on state religion. Wow, okay. So one doesn't want us to go see the atheism? Wow, that is... We get more political power here, though. Huh. I never really look at this, too, this stuff too quick, too closely, so... Basic... Basic training. Well, that's not good. Limited safety regulations. Construction spending factor. Alright. Final preparations. Wilson's side. <sighs> sigh, 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 sigh. Sliding his chair away from his desk and taking the freshly written speech out from the typewriter. It's all past midnight. He groaned as he looked past or looked upon the antique clock standing near the window. Finally, this bloody thing is done. Tony, you mind taking a look at this? He outstretched his hand towards a half asleep Anthony Mann. What? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I would have been uh, that I dozed off for a minute or two. I'll read it out for you. 
He clears his throat, Karma imagines with great pain that it come to you with this issue, an issue which threatens both the stability and ideological course of the party as well as the prosperity and liberty of England. Our party, as you well know, is founded on the principles of democracy, yada yada yada, alright, I get it. I'm too exhausted to read it all out, I've gotta say though, it's good, pretty darn good, I just hope that the others think so as well. <clears throat> Now we should get some sleep. Especially you, are. it's hard delivering a speech when you're falling asleep at the podium. Oh, we're just hoping for the best. Right. No more influence for them, please. And... Oh, what do we... What? Ah, you need to please, for that. <clears throat> there you go. Let's try that. There you go. We don't need that stuff then. And make sure we get all the land auction stuff done for the Scottish. For Dune's ancestors. Alright, the House of Lords, Zach. You know, let's do that one first, because we need time to do this stuff over here. The House of Lords has been one of the longest standing political institutions in the country. But this does not mean that it would be to our benefit to keep it in its current form. Its members, especially the hereditary ones, have always sought to tread down on the working man. Some lords were even amongst the most active members within the collaborator government. Mm -hmm. Complete abolishment may be off the cards for now, but we can still transform the chamber to better suit the needs of the revolution, and by extension, the will of the people. Which I forgot that these acts will probably require us to spend some PP. That's fine. And... <clears throat> we already left. Down with traitors. And that, comrades, is why we cannot compromise. Courting the reactionary, the capitalist, a traitor in any way. Ooh. Uh, or form means betraying her own ideals. I urge all of you gathered here, if you want England to be free and just and prosperous, give no quarter to those who wish to destroy us. The speech gone at mixed reactions. Most delicate simply looked at each other, scared and bewildered. Or scared and bewildered. <clears throat> Many others, however, react with thunderous applause. All of them dedicated hardliners, Harold noted. Thank you for the speech, Comrade Birch. Now for Comrade Wilson's speech. He made his way to the podium, exchanging looks with Birch along the way. Comrades, it is with great pain that I come to you with this an issue, an issue which uh, threatens both the stability and ideological course of the party as well, as the prosperity and liberty of England. Our party, as you well know, was founded on the principles of democracy, parliamentarianism, civil rights for all, and political freedom, especially the freedom of press, speech, and assembly. We fought and bled for these ideals, casting off the shackles of oppression which bound our nation for far too long. This victory was a shared one and taught us the importance of cooperation and mutual understanding for the good of all. There are, however, elements within the party which seek to destroy what we've built. Elements with a burning hatred for us in the current system. Elements that want to destroy our democracy and establish a Bolshevik, a Bolshevik oligarchy instead. And at the helm of this traitorous endeavor stands none other than original Butch. Comrades, I call for a vote of the removal of him and his clique from the party. The speech caused an uproar among Birch's supporters, yet they were quickly subdued by the other delegates. The voting proceeded, and it did not favor the old god. Bolsheviks are not welcome here. In the last act. In all my years of fighting for the rights of the working man, began Bill Alexander, there were times when I was convinced it wasn't enough. That there were moments where I doubted myself in the strength of the revolution, and that I was too weak to continue. After Spain, after Sea Line, after Cable Street and the West Russian War, I experienced failure of the workers of the world in the fight against fascism. And I felt that I just could not continue. This day is not anything like that, though, comrades. For when I retire from the party leadership tomorrow, I am not doing it out of despair. For when I de despaired, we despaired. We pulled ourselves together and did what was necessary. I instead rejoice for what we have dreamed about and sacrificed for what has been accomplished. England is free, and a government that works for the people is in control. I will be not giving up the fight at all, not in the slightest. I will still stand with you and the workers all over the world in their eternal struggle against poverty and oppression. Only I shall allow those with more energy to carry on where I've left off. Socialism is inevitable if we keep up the work, comrades. And I hope my efforts have made it extremely easier for a better world to be possible for the people of England. Comrades, as I end this chapter of my long career, I only wanted to say one thing to you all. Long live the struggles of the proletariat. And there goes the man who made it all, all possible. Well, he left. Our last speech. Well, it feels like we... Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh, some radical appeal. As they make up a sizable portion of our members of parliament, we must appeal to the radicals within our party. Their support will be needed to keep the, our government intact. Besides, there's very little cost for us to continue projecting the image of a united left. In order to appease this wing of the party, we'll have to take greater action than we would have liked. Therefore, we'll try to fulfill only the most unavoidable hardliner demands. Even though we might have just gotten rid of some of them. But don't question that. Don't question it. So, now who do we have the head of the government? Actually, what is the party like here? 79% for SLP progress. SLP pol politites. Progress politites, okay. That's actually really good for us. No monarchy. If you want to be that, please go ahead. Oh, there's Harold Wilson. Yeah, on the left. Cool. The electoral map is looking pretty nice. NDL Democrats, Patriots, MSA, Jellicoe's right there. He looks like, I'll be honest, like, Jellicoe looks like 
He just looks. He's gonna be a weird feeling there. Thirty-six percent government. What do you mean thirty-six percent stability? What do you mean? All right. So now what? Overall, we have two hundred thirty out of the five hundred three. We need it. We need two fifty-two. Compromise with the reformists. Um, the National Democratic League. I don't want to increase the support at all. That's a that's a lot. Massive increase of support. Um, increasing their influence. That's not. That's like nothing. 100 PP. We need 252 to pass the act. We have 254. So, all it requires is more PP. Which is fine with us. They have slightly more influence, but that's fine with us. We don't really care. We can close out of this for now because we were actually pretty good. And I'm definitely not going to give them any more support right there. So, so uh, some radical appeal. Followed with the criminalized same-sex relationships. A lot of the old restrictions remain from the traditions of the past, whether they be financial or social, that have repressed our people for a long time. None more so than the homosexuals who have been persecuted since before the collaborators came to power. This is, unfortunately, a deeply ingrained part of our society. The least we can do is decriminalize homosexuality to make our people a little bit more accepting towards each other. So we get more reformists. Reformists? Reformists will have a boost. Reform progress will increase by 1%. Replace outlaw will decriminalize and we lose 10% stability. The benefits of opportunity. And since we're here, let's take a quick look. Oh, look at all the radar we're trying to build. Yeah. I've already set it, I've set it up to a point where, like, it's liking super hard. Oh! Goodbye, Africa! Well, hardly knew ya. You probably would have preferred it if we owned you instead, but you know what? We're libertarian socialists here, so we don't own you. Um, but for all this stuff, like, once we run out of stuff to build, I'm just pretty much done. We'll come back to later on. If, if you want to build the greatest story you never told, let's go right ahead. I never thought I could laugh like this again, oh lord. And happy 1968, everyone. Hope you have a great, great year. Oh, hello. And about 30 days, I left. not too bad. Some radical appeal. All right. So, here is the question of the hour. Which way are we going to go after we look at special forces? Well, let's do special forces first. Um, all right, all right. There you go. Basically, yes, please. So, overall, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the Female Pension Act or we should do the Equality Act. And overall, there's more support for the Equality Act. We don't want to give women pensions. But uh, let's do this one first. Equality Act. Equality for women is another part of our continued effort to liberate our people from the ways of old. The rights for women were already appallingly restricted before the German invasion, and after years of no progress, many have become desperate for equality. We will be the ones to deliver these changes to emancipate all English women. But not Welsh women. Just the English women, not Welsh women. No, no, no. If you want to the effects of unification, please go ahead. They're stuck with us now. Good. Yeah, I can read this one too, why not? The left resistance were one of the few factions in the Civil War to employ the help of female soldiers from which it benefited greatly. They proved themselves to be capable as their male counterparts, and therefore they must be rewarded for the skill and bravery they displayed on the battlefield. Pensions and greater rights will be granted to those who serve the cause of freedom. Our people must learn that female soldiers should be valued as their male ones already are. We don't believe in giving them pensions. Only equal rights, that's it. Hey, minus 2.9 billion, so that's not too bad. Especially as we're suppressing the national debt as it gets more interest on it. Whoopsie. And there you go. Not bad. Uh, oh, we can do that again. Oh, that's actually would have been really nice. So, 254. I mean, that's good. Conservative MPs, huh? Absolute domination of the reformation of the party. Very good. If you guys need to train some more, that's fine with me. The benefits of opportunity. Catherine first met Ludmilla, Ludmilla when both her families were sheltering the traitor's government's artillery, or sheltering the traitor's, from the traitor's government artillery in the mayor basement. Catherine and Ludmilla held each other as they thought the world was going to end, not because they knew each other, but because they hadn't known what else to do, as the world seemed to end. They met each other for a second time at the voting booths, and struck up a nice conversation about how things had changed. It wasn't until the fifth meeting that Catherine finally realized she felt something more for the black-haired daughter of a refugee. It wasn't until the ninth that she realized Ludmilla, Ludmilla felt something back. Things had to be hidden from everyone. Catherine wasn't the most aware of young, young women, but she knew very well what might happen if someone spotted the two ladies kissing by the woods. Ludmilla was worried that her mother would think, distressed that she already was by the loss of Ludmilla's brother in one of the volunteer battalions during the fighting. But things continued, and an experiment turned into what Catherine thought might be love. As they finally brought an apartment to share, they sh she had all but accepted that no matter her thoughts, her relationship was just not the one she could tell her parents about until today. Today, as she and Ludmilla walked side by side up to the small cottage where her mother and father lived, they brought with them a little simple little piece of newspaper, one which mentioned almost offhandedly that it was no longer criminal act to engage intimately with members of the same sex. With Ludmilla holding one hand, Catherine knocked on the door. Love blooms in the most unlikely places. Actually, I'm hungry. Oh, wait, one more day. That's good. 
A barbaric secret. Brighton was arrived that day. The streets were covered in confetti and sun-bleached sands were trodden by the many freed at last from fear. Light and color ruled Brighton as the smiles of men and women who could at last live in public without fear of isolation and hatred. As those who had been hiding it for so long stepped out into the light at last, I followed suit and she did too. I met her in school. A cocky girl seemed to rule the world as far as I could see. She noticed me first and we got along quite well. Within weeks I couldn't stop thinking of the girl with the perfect brown hair and the confident grin and endless creativity. Within weeks we admitted our love for one another, embarrassingly blurted out one day after school. <clears throat> a year later she told me she wanted to join a terrorist corps. And for the first time in my life, she, I doubted her. I thought she was chasing dreams that we could ever stay together forever. And that she was having another childish notion that we both regret that we had strung up by Paolo's bobbies. But I relented, of course. I promised her I would follow her whatever she, wherever she would go. That I would believe in her, so I came with her. And we won. I don't know how we won, but we seized the day and we fought for a better future for England. I killed for her. She was injured for her. And at first it seems like I was in the right in the first place. Even after victory, life would be forever in a place of misery and pain, of hatred and misfortune, but then came Stonewall. The Americans stood up for something, they were brave, they believed in themselves, and all of a sudden we did do. Uh, people across the country rose up, and instead of twiddling their thumbs, they did something for us. And for the first time in history, homosexuals of England, gays, and lesbians were free. I have to go now, my wife is calling me for tea. If you're reading this, always remember, there's always hope, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and there's always be someone to help you to the end of it. Sign Matilda Reeve Lewis. So is that the end for her? Also, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Uh, English history is written, so. House of Lords. We lose political parts. Gosh, dang it. Um, now we're going to vote for the next act, too, but, uh... Is that the end for Matilda? That actually might be, because I remember reading that when I did the uh, more... Uh, collaborator side, too, so. Hmm, interesting. Civilian budget boost? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, no, we keep doing that, because we need more PP, so. Always us and PP. When in doubt... PP comes out. Uh, we need more PP. Um, anyways, after the Equality Act, we shall go ahead and do the church. One of the greatest issues pre present for the socialist future of our country is the Church of England. It is one of the most ancient and deep-seated English institutions that they have long espoused views that have contradicted our own. This problem is a divisive one, and two sides' solutions have quickly become apparent. We can either take a more radical approach and abolish the church entirely, introducing state atheism, and greatly shaking up English society. Alternatively, we could let it continue existing, but reduce its influence in the government and force it to take a more socialist tone. The government controlling religion? Eh? Who am I to say? I'm just a guy on the internet. Alright, Lake Church. Followed up with what? How much support do we have? Not a lot. Reformist, it's fine. We're gonna get that much more support. Uh. Hmm. That's still not... Uh, I don't want to do this. I should not spend all the PP. I'll do it once. Why not? Screw it. I should have not done the hardliners. That's my bad. See, that's why we need more PP. That's my fault. Yeah, I should have done that one. I should have just done this one, first of all. But we get how much every day? 0.8? Yeah, 0.82. That's not too bad. Followed up with fixing the counties. The collaborator government has spent years distorting the boundaries and practices of England's counties and constituencies. Corruption has become commonplace and has led to some incredibly harmful changes to the inner borders of the country. Some have gone as far as to create borders that have become reminiscent of the rotten boroughs that existed over a century ago. Of course, all these issues shall be fixed by us to fit into the vision of our New England. We just don't want political power, do we? Minus 5% more is not much, but like, we just don't like PP, do we? We just hate PP. That sucks. Uh, that's a little bit too out of time for me. I think their tanks. Oh, we are doing some tank stuff, so. That's why we gotta keep boosting this up. Hey, 70 billion, that's pretty good. Alright, now we're down to 53.63 billion. Not bad. Lake Church. Opioid of the masses, comrades. While our fellow socialists haven't had the greatest experience with the church, be it Anglican, Catholic, or Lutheran, it does not mean we have to be enemies with the church as well. Of course, we have to dismantle the ties between the church and the state and end the toxic near monopoly of Anglicanism. We believe that uh, Salazar is dead, but uh, <clears throat> we believe, however, that every person has the right to choose what to believe in, and if the church helps them, so then so be it. Remember, the ideals of Christianity and socialism are not far apart, as many Christian socialists would here confirm. Comrades, the previous speakers raised some valid points, but that doesn't mean he's right. Religion, especially one organized in the vein of Anglican, Anglicanism, as the opiate of the masses, a distraction of the, for the proletariat. A social state doesn't need one. The bishops are parasites, comrades, snakes, oozing venom into the hearts of the listeners, agents, and allies of the bourgeois. You want to let the church run free, do so, but don't be surprised when you end up with a proletariat hostile to our cause. Only see atheism will free the workers from their shackles. will decrease by 3% and you get more political power. Religious freedom must be preserved. 
performance. Well, someone did say we shouldn't go this route, so must be preserved. The Voting Systems Act. Democracy may have been introduced into England following the end of the Civil War, but the system has failed to adequately represent our people. It leaves too many people without sufficient representation, and in some cases without a proper vote in the first place. The old system, of course, will have to be replaced. Everyone will have to be given a fair vote. We will bring a better democracy for the workers, of course. Actually, taking more time with this one is fine with me because we just need to get more political power. I hate that. Uh, we'll just compromise with more stuff. And 15 days, we'll have it done, and we'll be fine. Yeah, that sucks. More influence there, but whatever. That's fine with us, too. Doesn't really matter. How strong? You know, Scotland is not weak to take out. Shouldn't be too bad, though, but you never know. Def Division Defense Corps territory plus 15%. We might actually have to naval invade, too, so we'll see what happens. English minority, huh? Fixing the counties? Oh, we can't do that one yet. God dang it. Oh, there we go. It's written. Look at that. If we want to do that, please go ahead. Low pensions, acceptable pensions. Women in the workplace with gender equality. Limited safety regulations, acceptable safety regulations. Military assistance with non combat only. Okay. Socialist labor support progress would decrease. That sucks. But we have more political power now. Hopefully, we do okay here. Alright. So that finishes everything up, and we'll get to our last speech, which he's already gone. Bill Alexander has decided that the time has come for him to leave behind the leadership of the party. He's done a great deal to hold the wings of the party together, but now we must let him go. However, there's still one last action he has left to take. Alexander is to give one last speech where he'll put his confidence into Wilson to lead the party. He has worked so hard to maintain, and so the retort will be passed on to a new generation of leadership. Look at all this stuff we're making. And some more, uh... going to be a lot of forts here. Not going to lie, this is a lot of forts. But what else are we going to build? We can't build any more civvies yet, so... Might as well, right? Nice. Mechanical range finder. Eh, that's okay. Uh, support equipment. Yeah, why not? Better engineers. Anything that helps out our divisions in the field immediately. Conservative victory in Canada. Oh, what what happened here? Why is it so much worse? Oh, because it... Oh, yeah, everything else. That sucks, man. That really sucks. There you go. Ugh. Alright, so actually, we just need a little bit more. There you go. Hey, there we go. 50. Uh, we didn't spend 100 this time. That's actually really nice. 256 out of needed to 252. Nice. The Equal Vote Act. Cool. God dang it, Harold Wilson. Show up. But I guess the new Socialist Armed Forces. With the Socialist Labour Party's victory in the England election, it now falls to us to rebuild England's armed forces. To ensure England never fa again falls to foreign powers, but the task before us is not just rebuilding in terms of manpower and equipment, but in terms of spirit as well. We are a Socialist Republic now, and the military must reflect that. Our armed forces will not fight for such outdated ideas like king and country, but to protect our Socialist Revolution and its people. The lessons learned by our militias during the Civil War will help us shape our new military, opening up the ranks to men and women alike. Regardless of class or social standing, the new military will help keep the torch of the revolution alive. Something ends, something begins. Good morning, Harold. Please come in. Wilson looked at Bell Alexander, finding it ridiculous that this unassuming old man was, by all accounts, a father of modern England. Good morning, Bill, he said as he shook his hand. Quite the lovely house you've got here. I'm pleased that you, that, to know that you like it, Bill retorted. I was hoping that it would be my retirement home. Retirement home? Does that mean you're leaving? Well, yes, I'm getting old, Harold, and before you say anything, yes, I know, you've only six years younger than me, but, well, the things I've done, the things I've seen and endured, especially in Spain and Russia. It can age a man, make his hair go wider than a year. I feel older than I am, Harold, stretched, tweaked, I just can't do it anymore. You, on the other hand, you've got a mission to fulfill, and I'm confident that you can, and it's not like I'll disappear. You're welcome to visit me and ask anything you want. I will, but should the rest of us know as well? I thought you'd announce this publicly. Oh, I will, but not right now. Right now, we should get some breakfast. Why not? As yeah, so we're doing that, is there nothing else we can do until the next elections? Oh, crap. Well, if that's the case, the new model army might not be bad. Let's get that one so we can do our other stuff there, too. Boost that PP up. Yeah, we're getting still compromised, but that's fine. We're okay. Cool. Army time. The new model army with the war won. We need to look forward to improving our military using the lessons we've learned during all that hard fighting. While the troops evidently performed admirably, there are significant improvements that we can make, particularly in heavy weaponry and organization. Let's create a bigger, better, more professional army to protect the security of our New England. We shall forever defend our revolution on our island, and if possible, spread it even further abroad. Oh boy. Oh, don't excite us too much there. So who do we get as head of government then? Electoral map, huh? Hmm. So it's good to keep an eye on the electoral map. When do elections happen? At the end of the year? I have no idea. For our public defense. One of the immediate tasks facing the SLP is the state of the English military. 
or the English Armed Forces. While victorious, our army leaves much to be desired. The Air Force must be constructed from scratch, and the Navy will have to complete, be completely rebuilt. It'll take time and money, but we must do it to save ourselves from a German invasion. Once again, we go forth. Uh, the new Red Air Force, why not? After the Second World War, our proud Air Force was entirely dismantled to defend our island effectively. We need air superiority over English skies, since we barely have a leg to stand on now. We can totally rebuild our Air Force from the ground up while sticking to the principles that once made our Air Force the envy of the world. We will need new planes, pilots, and airports, but a revitalized Air Force will be at the back of one of our new armed forces. I oh, look at that. An English person's duty. They're stuck with us now. The time has come. The candidates have been chosen for every party in the past, in every seat around the country. The parties have chosen the next prime ministers. They will hope to occupy 10 Downing Street. And now comes a short yet chaotic tradition of English Parliament. Rare yet so in so consequential for the future of the nation. It's time for the elections. Um, I guess NDL, George Jilko, and backed up by Cloud Alkenlach. Okay. Well, I guess I'll continue reading this then. The National Democratic League and Socialist Labour Party are the two major political organizations in the election. The NDL with... Jellicoe and backed up by Alkenleck, stands for the restoration of traditional pre-war England, with the necessary reforms to keep it relevant in the modern age, and to make it respected once again on the world stage. The SLP, headed by Harold Wilson and endorsed by Bill Alexander, is taking a more radical approach. England will finally cast off the chains that held the workers down and will move towards a more equitable future, free of poverty and with the rest of the world worldwide proletariat. There is also David Sterling's organization, but many observers regard it as an extremist minor party. The choice will come down to Jellicoe's promise of a Past glory restored, or Wilson's promises of a future glory to be claimed. But Queen and Country, NDL, vote SLP, and win th we can win the peace, pretty much. And let us end the episode with... Actually, listen to the Civil War. Uh, receive elite infantry divisions, keep the militias, issue conscription, effective strike forces, which I do like that, that's quite nice. Every worker, soldier, more population, more defense, armed unions, new tank models, thunder and lightning, an army to protect the revolution. I'll let you, I'll let you guys decide. Should we do listen to the Civil War versus keeping the militia? Should we do a navy to protect the coast, or a navy to protect the trade, and escorting convoys, stronger torpedoes, improving the armor? Please let me know in the comments below which way you believe that we should go. And of course, this is the other side, the Ring of Fire, of course. Qu deeper and quieter, very nice, very nice. Improving the radars, not bad. From 43 and new fortifications. But uh, I'll finish off with uh, more pilots. Praising the Aces. Albert Ball, Bob Brahman, Johnny Johnson, these are the names people remember, true knights of the air that defended the skies of England and France in the heydays of the Empire. We need to emulate their fighting spirit in our new Air Force, as well as using our combat leaders as recruiting tools to motivate potential pilots to sign up for their own short of glory. With luck, we can establish the same esprit du corps that made our pilots legendary throughout the world as doughty fighters. But if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. I apologize for a shorter than normal episode, but the next one should be a little bit longer. But regardless, thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.